We come together in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we come together on a lovely weekend, we uh, are celebrating, I guess, Labor Day weekend, but also the 23rd Sunday Ordinary Time. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind God's mercy and ask for forgiveness of our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and received adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can know God's counsel? Or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul and the earthen shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or who ever knew your counsel except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, 
whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your count consent so that the good you do might not be forced but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved especially to me, but even more so to you as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have, an, have the resources to finish. Or what king, marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king, advancing upon him with 20,000 troops. But if not, while he was, is still far away, he would send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, anyone of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. In my hand right here, I have a, um, a comic from Dilbert. I've used it before, but I came across it again, so I liked it, and I'm going to use it again. And um, so it's from the Dilbert comic strip. Uh, the setting is a company meeting, and we have Dilbert and Tina. Tina is one of the characters with the hair out to here, uh, uh, very far. And um, she is uh, the coworker who tends to always be late for a meeting. And so the strip uh, starts off with Tina saying, sorry I'm late, traffic was terrible. And then Dilbert says, isn't the traffic from your house always terrible at that time of day? And uh, Tina says, exactly. That's why I'm late every day. And then he says, do you see any way to fix that? And she says, uh, Tina says, I can't control the traffic. And Dilbert says, you could leave earlier. And then uh, she says, then I wouldn't get enough sleep. And then he says, you could go to bed earlier. Then she has her arms stretched out in anger and she says, then I wouldn't have time to watch Netflix until two in the morning. And then she says, do you want me to hate my life? And Dilbert says, I didn't until now. <laughs> so, um, it is a, uh, 
it's a choice that reflects the uh, Netflix at 2 a.m. that is coming over the priority of her getting to the meeting on time. So life, we know, is about choices. It could be staying up uh, for just one more episode, whatever it is, um, or it could be the choice between, you know, just with someone, uh, a, a choice between gossip or kindness and maybe honoring the absent. It could be clicking a link or not clicking a link. It could be choosing water instead of another drink. It could be um, something more along the line of a compulsion or, or an addiction. And uh, in those cases, so often, the first choice is free, but then freedom becomes compromised. And so in today's gospel, uh, Jesus presents us with what sounds like very stark choices. They're kind of scary. It, he says uh, it's hating one's parents, carrying one's cross, um, renouncing possessions uh, on the one hand, or being a disciple on the other. And it sounds uh, very harsh. Now, we know that it is not uncommon uh, in, for biblical writers to use hyperbole or to use an, exagger an exaggeration to make a point. But there's always truth in that. And so we can also know that or understand that the word hate, so we hear that word hate uh, over and over. Uh, in ancient texts, it also could mean to love less. In other words, um, it's not how we would understand hatred and how we would understand it. But either way, Jesus knows if we put him first, uh, and, uh, then even love for the, our greatest loved ones, then uh, the love for others will be stronger and everything else will fall into place. So it's not a competition with love of others, it's actually a way to strengthen it. The question is, is how do we do this? Uh, how do we make, come up with the right choices which keep God first? The first reading even asks us, how can we conceive what the Lord intends? It's a very common question uh, for many. And I've given, um, I, given these before too, I believe, but they're the Ignatian rules for discernment. Uh, in other words, choosing really t or thinking about what is of God. And the first one is just to be aware, you know, what's happening in us. There's, there's a great attention these days to mindfulness. There's something to it if we bring our faith to it. Um, so what's happening in us? And then we can just say, ask, you know, what is really of God or not? And I'll come back to this then we choose and act accordingly. So becoming aware can, again, just entail just taking a pause or a short, uh, I call it the holy pause once in a while, it does wonders, two to three seconds can, um, can really uh, give us a good course correction. We can be aware of the choice itself uh, as well, again, as those thoughts and feelings and circumstances around it. Then we can reflect on our priorities. You know, what is good or of God? What is, or what is bad, not of God? And it would be nice if God just infused that uh, all knowledge in us, but we are equipped with the deposit of our faith, with reason and with a formed conscience. And then we decide and act accordingly. And even if we err, then we err in charity. So it's a simple process. It's centuries old. that comes from an Ignatian style of, of discernment, just being aware, uh, choosing the good, and acting accordingly. It sounds simple enough, but we know it has its challenges, which is why we continually ask for grace and wisdom, and we just seek to do our best. So back to Dilbert. Tina made the priority of late-night uh, Netflix over work. Not huge consequences uh, at the time, but it could have accumulated effects, and the same uh, can happen with us. So what choices do we make, and where does God fit into them? What, uh, in taking time to reflect, even a few seconds or a minute, it will become stronger, like a muscle we exercise. We become happier and freer for choosing that which is good and that which is of God. Lord Jesus, you invite us to the banquet of your altar and feed us with the gift of the Eucharist. Hear us now as we humbly bring to you our prayers and petitions. 
For world leaders, may the Holy Spirit direct their actions to bring about peace for all nations, especially Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may we be inspired by the scriptures to live our lives free of earthly distractions and be wholly devoted to Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For respect of all human life, that we may recognize the dignity and image of God that is imprinted on every individual, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish and community, especially Jean Schreier, Pat Punch Pearson, and Colleen Scalzi, may they find in you healing and comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Kathleen Fissler, James Gardner, and Nancy Martin. May they and all the faithful departed rest in peace of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of the Assumption Parish, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, be merciful to your people. Fill us with your gifts and embolden us to always serve you in faith, hope, and love. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of this sacred mystery, we may faithfully be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. So with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter into my room. But when you say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. So this is a weekend when uh, some are traveling and some are traveling or visiting here. So uh, welcome to any guests. If you're traveling, be safe or be safe to all so you can return soon. <clears throat> also, I'll be traveling. Uh, I'm leaving tomorrow for Italy with my, there's five siblings, their spouses, and I don't know, eight or 10 others. And it's just vacation. Six or seven days are gonna be on a bike. Okay, so it's a bike that's mostly going downhill and it's electric, but I hope I don't fall off, pray that I don't fall off adjusting some GoPro or other gadget that I have. Uh, but I'll keep you in prayers and be back in a few weeks um, and uh, pray for good weather. Looks like a lot of rain in Italy. They might need it, but the timing might be wrong. Um, but be well and have a good rest of the weekend. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.